Hello and welcome to this week's news. Now the first article is uh, a study done by NASA where they've actually discovered uh, some tadpole shaped plasma jets shooting from the surface of the sun. In the article they actually go on to suggest that these may cause the heating of the corona and they suggest that these mini flares are caused by magnetic reconnection releasing the energy explosively. Now to me this makes no sense. You can't simply unhinge a field line. It's a concept, not a physical thing. For me, it's much simpler. Is this not just what we described earlier, an excess of charge being released from the surface and accelerating towards the corona, which is what we would expect to see in an electric sun model? Now, most of us assume that the Earth's atmosphere is only about 100 kilometers thick but it's just been revealed that our atmosphere is a lot more complex than we originally thought. Now using old data from the SOHO probe, they were able to determine that the Earth has a geocorona that stretches out some 630,000 kilometers away from the surface of the Earth. That's about 50 times Earth diameter. And it's composed uh, of neutral hydrogen that glows in the far ultraviolet. And it extends far enough that our moon actually passes through it. The geocorona has been photographed in the past. The Apollo astronauts took pictures, uh, but we had no idea that it stretched out as far uh, as that from Earth. Now, the discovery itself does have implications for space-based telescopes, as they will need to take into account the emission of ultraviolet when studying any objects in ultraviolet. And it also means that, in theory, no human has actually left Earth's atmosphere. Now for the next article we jump to Mars and uh, NASA have detected using their new weather station that they've just deployed on the Mars InSight craft an unexplained low frequency sound, an infrasound. Now they speculate that it might have been caused by a meteor crashing into the Martian atmosphere or possibly a landslide somewhere else but at the moment they don't really understand what might have caused it or how far away it was from the craft itself but they speculate that with further analysis of the data they should be able to reveal more about that. Also this week NASA announced that we were well on the way to discovering alien life in quotes. Uh, NASA has made the search for alien life a top priority and recent discoveries would give ample reason that this endeavor will be successful soon. Now in particular he singled out Mars uh, as a particularly promising abode for life and he highlighted three intriguing finds over the past couple of years. Number one, the red planet surface hosts complex organic molecules which are the building blocks of life. Number two, in some areas the concentration of methane varies seasonally, possibly implying that they were made by living organisms as they come out of a dormant state. And thirdly, a huge lake of liquid water has been discovered beneath Mars's South Pole, which potentially could harbour life as well. Now NASA is about to test a new type of deep space communication using X-rays rather than radio waves. Now the X-rays have a much shorter wavelength and this means that they can send more data for the same amount of transmission power. And as an example, that the recent Horizons flyby data of Ultima Thule will take months to broadcast back to Earth due to these limitations. Now, the reason I find this particularly interesting is twofold. Firstly, our search for extraterrestrial life, SETI, focuses mainly on radio waves and visible uh, light. They do examine X-rays, but it's less of a priority. And secondly, uh, fast radio bursts are events that occur throughout our universe, which we don't really understand. Some repeat and some do not, and they emit very strong, very short X-ray bursts. Um, and there are various theories about what they could be. And one of the theories is that if you were a potential advanced alien civilization and you were scanning various solar systems or stars, then rather than sending it either via radio waves or sending your probe back home, which could take years, or if not hundreds of years, the idea is that they send it back via a vast pulse of x-ray so you can cram lots of data into it and you only need to send it for a very short period of time it has to be particularly strong in order to get a, a large distance uh, so it kind of piqued my interest in, in here we are developing potentially a, a technology very much in its infancy that that could 
yield something like that in the future who knows um i'm only speculating at this stage it is something i want to cover so fast radioverse and looking at potentially what some of the th competing theories about what they are uh, in more detail and finally scientists think that they've identified a previously unknown form of neural communication that self-propagates across the brain tissue and it can leap wirelessly from one neuron in one section of the brain to another even if they've been surgically severed. Now it gives us some radical new insights about the way neurons might be talking to one another via some mysterious process which is unrelated to the conventional understanding of this mechanism. Now for me I find this particularly interesting because there's so little that we really understand about the brain and where does the brain end and the mind start and where does consciousness fit in with that mind and the fact that we're finding ways that the brain communicates which doesn't require them to be connected yeah that that to me is very fascinating and, and leads us to think in terms of you know is this some form of telepathy can this explain some of these things um again something i would dearly like to look at in future but for now as always be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.